My name is David Ingham. I'm an engineering director with the Red Hat Middleware team, and I look after the messaging and data products. And co-presenting with me today is Paolo Patiano. Uh, Paolo is a principal software engineer on our messaging team. And we're delighted to talk about AMQ Streams publicly for the second time. We, did a, we mentioned it briefly the other day, but this is the real, the first presentation that we've done on this topic. So I'm going to spend, um, I'm going to spend just a few minutes setting some context, and then I'm going to hand over to Paolo, who's going to show you the real deal and, and run some demos. So messaging tends to get used for a very broad range of use cases. Everything from low latency publish and subscribe through to event sourcing for microservices architecture. And all of these different use cases have pretty different requirements on the messaging system. And it's unlikely that you can find a single messaging technology that's a great fit for all of those different use cases. And so the philosophy with AMQ is to provide an integrated suite of messaging technologies, messaging components, so you can use the right tool for the job. So most folks will know AMQ for the broker. AMQ broker has been around for, for some time. It's a pure Java messaging broker with a rich feature set, support for JMS 2.0 and a bunch of other language APIs, um, and, um, and some great performance. So we have AMQ broker. Next we have interconnect. So interconnect is a message router. So unlike a, unlike a broker that takes ownership of messages, the router simply routes messages from producers to consumers. And if you saw the keynote demo on Tuesday, um, where we did the, the real-time load balancing across the secure hybrid cloud, that was using the intercon interconnect technology. And then what we're here to talk about today is streams, the next piece that we're adding to, to the AMQ offering. So, MQ Streams is a productization of Apache Kafka, uh, and it has a special focus on deploying Apache Kafka and managing that deployment on OpenShift. So, how many folks, by show of hands, how many folks in the room know what uh, Apache Kafka is? Okay, and keep your hands up if you've used it, you're using it. Okay. All right, so I guess that's maybe about a quarter of the room. Um, that's pretty good. All right, so for those that don't know what it is, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on, on Apache Kafka, but I'm just going to whiz through quickly the high-level concepts, and then we'll show you what we're doing with um, Kafka on OpenShift with the AMQ Streams offering. So people think of, think of Kafka in different ways. You might think of it as a publish and subscribe messaging system, which is true, it is a publish and subscribe messaging system. Um, you might think of it as a streaming data platform. More precisely, you might think of it as a distributed, horizontally scalable, fault tolerant commit log. So it's a, it's a messaging system, but it differs from traditional messaging systems like AMQ Broker. And I'll explain a little bit of the, the differences there. So, at the high level, it's actually a pretty simple, uh, a pretty simple architecture. So, messages are sent to and received from topics, and the scalability that Kafka provides comes from the fact that co topics are partitioned, and most of the time you work directly with those partitions. The topic is like a virtual object that contains the that contains the partitions, and messages are sent to a single partition. The Another key difference is about the retention of messages. So a, a traditional message broker will usually keep the messages around until all of the consumers that are interested in that message have consumed it. So if it's a queue, that will mean a single consumer. If it's a publish and subscribe topic, until all of the subscribers have consumed it. Kafka doesn't know anything about the, the consumers. Um, and therefore, it doesn't use that that reference counting based model for message retention, but rather it, it keeps the messages around based upon some limits that you've provided, either based upon the size of storage or, the, um, or a, a time, you know, you can specify a, a time based retention policy. Or you can use this notion of compaction, which means that when messages, messages are published with a key and the, and the data, 
And if you specify compaction, then when you, when you publish a new message with a key of a, of a record that's already in, in the, the topic, then the new record will replace it. So th there's a different model around retention compared to traditional, traditional brokers. So we have a topic here. I'm showing one that's split into um, three petitions. And producers connect to those partitions directly and publish messages. So you might have a producer that is connected to all of the partitions. You might have a producer that's connected to one of them. It depends upon the, the use case in, in question. Um, similarly, on the consumption side, uh, the consumer connects to the partitions. You don't connect to the, the notion of a topic. Now, the, the scalability that is provided means that these petitions are distributed amongst the brokers. And Kafka is inherently highly available. So for every topic partition, there is a leader, and there'll be a number of followers. And this, this provides the, the high availability of, uh, of the Kafka partitions. So all of the applications, the producers and consumers, they interact with the leader. So they send and receive the messages to the leader. And then in the background, that leader, the state of the leader, is being replicated, pushed to the followers. The follow that's the only purpose that they serve. They, they, don't, they don't handle any requests from, from clients. It, in a situation where a, a broker goes away, then there's a leader election, and for each partition that had a leader on the broker that's failed, a new leader is elected from the remaining brokers that are still live. So you have this inherent scalability through partitioning and high availability through replication. Now, I'm not going to go through this in um, uh, too much detail, but one of the questions that I'm often asked is to compare and contrast the broker with Kafka. And I've tried just to capture that at the high level with this slide. So I think that if you remember one thing, it's that this difference as to where the smarts reside. So AMQ Broker, which is a productization of uh, ActiveMQ Artemis, is a smart broker. And by that I mean that it's doing a lot of work on behalf of the clients. So it's, it remembers, for example, where all of the subscribers are in the stream of messages. It knows which messages those subscribers are interested in. When a subscriber gets connected, it can specify um, a message selector, a filter that says, I'm only interested in messages of this type, and the broker will only give those messages to that consumer. Another consumer might be interested in messages of another type, and similarly, it will only be delivered those messages. So they're smart inside the broker, which is great. That rich feature set simplifies, um, simplifies the task of building applications, and it simplifies the amount of work that the clients have to do. Now, Kafka takes the opposite approach. Kafka, the broker, is very simple. It's just maintaining those logs. It's just appending messages, appending records to those logs and serving messages out of, out of those logs when requested. But the clients are responsible for determine, determining where they are in the, in the log. The, the broker isn't, isn't maintaining that state for, um, uh, for all of the subscribers. Rather, the client will say, give me, me give me this message, give me that message. Um, now, Kafka can help you out in that you need to record your position in the log somewhere. Now, you can write it on the back of an envelope, or you could store it in a, a local database, but you can also push that into a, a topic up at Kafka as a place to record your position in the, uh, your position in the stream. But, Conceptually, the model is that the, the broker isn't aware of the subscribers, and the clients are smart. The clients maintain their position in the stream. And this division of labor means that the broker is doing less work, and because of that, is in, uh, scales very well. You know, that, that's, it's this trick that, that gives Kafka the, sca the great scalability characteristics that it has. Um, I've called out some of the other differences here in that, um, for example, uh, AMQ Broker will allow, allow messages to be stored either in memory or on disk, whereas Kafka is always disk-based. Um, some other differences in terms of protocol support and, um, and that kind of thing. 
But I'm going to leave that there, and I'm now going to hand over to Paolo, who's going to, going to go into AMQ streams in some more detail. So then before starting uh, talking about uh, AMQ streams uh, running on OpenShift, so moving Kafka running on OpenShift, um, why I should use uh, AMQ streams? As already uh, David has already said, um, Kafka was born with the scalability scalability in mind. So it means that you have this uh, cluster, you have more uh, brokers, uh, the topics uh, are partitioned and so on. Uh, Kafka provides message ordering at partition level and then you have this uh, uh, smart client, dumb broker, but uh, the more important thing is that uh, you have to design uh, how many partitions you need, for example, for a topic, because in Kafka it's not possible to, uh, to remove uh, one partition, for example, because you have data loss in that case, or uh, you can have uh, different problems if uh, you are uh, increasing the number of, uh, of partition, or at least you should be aware that you can have some problems, because, for example, uh, if uh, the client send a message uh, with a key, um, using that, that key, it means that uh, the message will go to one specific partition and uh, the partition will be always the same. So all the messages with the same key will go in that partition. If you increase the number of partitions, um, because the, 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 the destination partition is based on hashing the key, uh, module the number of partition, in that case you can have a situation where uh, messages with the same key starts to go to a different partition, which is not what you want, right? So these are some uh, um, consideration about uh, um, Kafka, but uh, uh, this is uh, a downside about Kafka, right? And the, 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 the interesting thing is that uh, uh, Kafka can be used uh, for um, rewind and reply on the stream. So for example, you have a long term uh, storage uh, uh, in Kafka and uh, an application can rebuild the, 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 the status uh, rereading all the streams. And uh, in the same way, Kafka can be used as a K value store because as uh, already mentioned before, uh, if you um, uh, set the, 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 the partition to be compacted, the topic to be compacted by key, it means that, that every time a new message comes in with the same key, it overrides the uh, previous message. So you can use Kafka as a key value uh, store. The, um, what's the catch of having this kind of uh, advantages? The, the, the first one I already mentioned about uh, the, um, the number of of partition and changing the number of partitions that you have in a topic. But on the other side, uh, another uh, uh, disadvantage can be that the Kafka protocol is not proxied. It means that uh, all the clients need to be connected to the brokers, uh, to uh, the brokers that they need to send messages or receive messages because we have this concept of uh, uh, partition leader and uh, clients, consumer or producer needs to be connected to the leader for that partition in order to send and uh, receive the messages. It means that uh, if um, um, we have different partition with different leader on different brokers, um, a client needs to open different connection to all the brokers, right? So it's not possible to have uh, a uh, proxy in order to handle this kind of situation. Uh, it could be possible, for example, using uh, an HTTP proxy or uh, an NQP proxy. We have, for example, a proof of concept about having uh, this uh, uh, NQP bridge, which is uh, able to, to use just one connection to the bridge and then having different links uh, that are uh, linked to uh, different partition on different nodes. And it means that you are able to connect just with one connection to the bridge and then having the, the, the bridge handling more connection to the broker. But from a client side, the client can have just one connection. So it should be a way in order to, to avoid having the clients connecting to uh, different brokers. Now let's move to, to, um, to show how it's possible running uh, uh, Kafka and then uh, uh, streams on OpenShift. Uh, what we have done is um, an open source project, so uh, NQ Streams on OpenShift is based on an open source project which provides some tooling in order to do that for um, deploying uh, uh, the, the, the Kafka cluster, the Zookeeper Ensemble, and, and some uh, Docker images uh, which are used in order to run these uh, uh, tools, right? Um, and um, the main concept that we are using in the NQ streams on OpenShift is uh, the operators model that comes from Kubernetes. The, the 
the open, uh, open source project that uh, I'm talking about is this uh, Streamzy project. Uh, it's based on uh, the Apache License 2. And uh, here you can see all the reference um, for engaging with the, 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 the community and the engineers that are working on it. But uh, what are the challenges that we are trying to, to solve using this kind of uh, project, this kind of solution? Uh, the main challenge is that uh, Kafka is uh, a stateful application, right? It's not just like a microservices uh, uh, where you can just, uh, I don't know, uh, mm, shut down a pod, for example, running on Kubernetes and then uh, uh, re restarting the pod in order to have another instance, another new and completely different instance of the same microservice. Because uh, in this case, uh, I am dealing with uh, a stateless application. With Kafka, we have some needs. Uh, first of all, we have the need for uh, a stable identity on the broker. So each broker has uh, its own identity, and uh, each broker needs to have that identity for its life. Uh, and uh, at the same time, the, the brokers um, uh, need to be able to to discover each other on the network, and they need for um, a durable state. And of course, we need that um, uh, when a broker uh, goes down and then comes back, it needs to recover the state. So it's not a simple stateless application, if we can call a stateless application simple, of course, but it's a stateful application with, with some difference. Uh, and the same is true for uh, Zookeeper, either for the Zookeeper Ensemble and for the node that we have in the Zookeeper Ensemble, we have the, the, the same needs. Um, with Kubernetes and with OpenShift, we have a lot of uh, uh, tools for doing that. We have some uh, Kubernetes uh, resources like the stateful set, the persistent volume claims and services. So we can uh, try to deploy Kafka in that way, just creating the YAML files and then deploying that YAML files on our cluster and having all the Kafka cluster running and so on. But uh, it's not so easy because it means that, um, uh, first of all, we have to write that resources. So we, we have to write the YAML file, which, are, which can be complex. Uh, we have to handle these uh, resources on the cluster. So it means that uh, if something uh, changes, we want to increase the number of um, brokers uh, into the Kafka cluster. Uh, we want to change some configuration and so on. We have to, to handle and to manage and to, to hack the, 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 the resources using uh, all the Kubernetes tools that we have. Uh, so it's not so simple. Um, what are the goals that we have in mind with StreamZ? Um, first of all, we want to simplify the way to deploy uh, the Apache Kafka cluster on OpenShift. So we want to use uh, the native mechanism that we have uh, in OpenShift for provisioning the cluster and for managing the topics. So for creation, uh, for updating topics, and so on. And um, uh, trying to remove the uh, interaction that we have with the, the command line tools from OpenShift, right? Or at least trying to use this tool uh, not as much as possible. Um, and at the same time, we want uh, uh, a better uh, uh, integration between Kafka and the application that we can run on OpenShift. So having our uh, OpenShift cluster running our Kafka cluster, and then alongside with the, our application that can consume all the messages that we have inside the, the topics in the cluster. Uh, so for example, for microservices, for data streaming application, for event sourcing, and so on. So as you already mentioned, um, um, what is the component or the model, the pattern that provides this kind of uh, features? Uh, this comes from the operator model, uh, in Kubernetes, where the operator model uh, describe a new component with, which we can call controller, uh, which knows uh, um, the which has knowledge about uh, uh, the application that we want to deploy. In this case, our controller knows uh, uh, the needs that we have for Kafka, right? And it means that um, following these three uh, steps: observe, analyze, and act. The controller is in charge to uh, observe SAR some config map. So we are able to describe uh, our uh, Kafka broker using uh, a simple config map. So we can put the number of nodes that we want uh, into the cluster. We can uh, set the broker configuration, the whole checks configuration, and so on. And the um, controller is in charge to watch this config map. 
which is the, um, the, uh, the way for, um, for describing the cluster in a declarative way. So the user wants the cluster with that features. The controller uh, is in charge to watch the information from the config map and then uh, uh, act in a manner that um, we have the cluster uh, as the user wants. So it means that uh, uh, in the opposite direction, if something changes in the, in the cluster, uh, so some nodes go, uh, goes down, for example, the controller is in charge to check what the config map is saying and having this kind of uh, consistency be between uh, the, um, what I am describing, so uh, how I want the, 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 the cluster is, and uh, uh, the, the real situation that I have running uh, into the cluster. Um, today, StreamZ is based on using a uh, config map. So I have already said that we are using a config map in order to describe the cluster, uh, which has some advantages, for example, related to the permission. Mm, there are no needs for special permission in order to install uh, these config maps into the system. But um, um, there is another way for doing that, and uh, it's on the roadmap of the project uh, using the CRDs, uh, so the custom re uh, resource de uh, definition, where we are able to uh, having uh, a more flexible data structure for describing uh, all the information about uh, the cluster, but even the topic, as we can see uh, in a few moments. And uh, we can even set some permission on CRDs. So we can set permission for users to create topics but not deploying the cluster uh, and so on. Uh, the first component that the StreamZ project provides is the cluster controller. So as I said, we have this component which is in charge to, to watch the config map which describes uh, our cluster and then deploying the cluster. Deploying the Kafka cluster alongside with the Zookeeper cluster. Um, so it means that um, uh, this component is in charge to deploy two different kinds of cluster because uh, in Kafka, which is a broad project, the, the upstream project, we don't have uh, only the Kafka brokers alongside with Zookeeper, but we have, for example, even Kafka Connect. So the cluster controller running in StreamZ is able all, uh, uh, also to describe, to, to, to deploy a Kafka Connect uh, uh, cluster with some worker nodes, uh, which can, uh, we can describe using always a config map. And um, the other feature is that um, uh, other than a plain Kafka Connect config map, we can use uh, the S2I support that we have in OpenShift in order to build uh, a Kafka Connect images with um, uh, more connectors. So we can uh, use the, the built-in pipeline that we have in OpenShift in order to add more connectors uh, uh, to the Kafka Connect cluster that we want to run inside the OpenShift cluster. So as I mentioned, the config map uh, uh, allows to specify the number of nodes for Zookeeper and for the Kafka cluster the broker configuration and the Zookeeper configuration, the all checks on the pods that uh, we are going to, to run for running the cluster, and even so, mm, some information related to the metrics. So we are able to uh, specify the configuration for the exporter of the metrics that we have on, uh, on all the nodes of the cluster in Zookeeper and uh, in Kafka. And these metrics uh, uh, are available for a, Prometheus server, for example, and then we can show this kind of information using a Grafana dashboard, for example. And the last um, uh, point is that um, uh, we are providing different templates, OpenShift templates for creating and deploying the cluster, even if you can use uh, a, just a, a plain config map for doing that, because the template will deploy the config map for you. Um, and we are able to deploy uh, a Kafka cluster uh, with two different kinds of storage. The first one, the, 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 the ephemeral one, is using uh, just uh, a volume on a pod, so it means that I can lose all my data, so it's useful just for development, for testing, and so on. Or we can use uh, the persistent template, uh, which are going to use the, the, the persistent volumes in order to uh, storage uh, the messages. Um, the cluster controller is not only in charge to create the cluster, but even to, to managing the cluster. So it means that uh, I can change the cluster configuration. I can scale up and scale down the, the, the Kafka cluster, adding more nodes or removing nodes from the cluster. 
or I can change the configuration. So I can um, set some different value for some configuration uh, inside the broker. And then the cluster controller is in charge to start this kind of rolling updates for shooting down one by one the nodes into the cluster and then starting up the, the new nodes with the, the new configuration. Uh, in the same way, we can uh, deprovision in the cluster just deleting the config map. So I can just delete the config map which is describing my cluster and the cluster will be deprovisioned by the cluster controller. It means that um, what I said before, that we can use uh, the stateful set, uh, the persistent volume claims for handling the deployment of, of the cluster is done by the cluster controller. So underneath, I have just to describe my cluster using a config map or a CRD in the future, and then the cluster controller will be in charge to create all the OpenShift resources for me because it's going to use a stateful set, persistent volume claims, the services for, uh, um, for being able to communicate the, with the cluster and so on. So let's see uh, how it works. So I have an OpenShift cluster here. Let me to increase the font size maybe. Okay. And uh, I have a console. So I'm going to deploy some um, resources which are provided by StreamZ in order to have the StreamZ uh, controller uh, uh, running. So uh. okay so in that case I have uh, the streams controller which uh, is uh, running Okay, so I have this component that now is listening for uh, config map in order to create a new uh, Kafka cluster. For doing that, I'm going to uh, deploy some template which are provided by StreamZ in order to simplify the deployments. Uh, if I switch to the, to the OpenShift console, you can see that uh, I'm able to select what kind of cluster I'm going to deploy. So I have the Apache Kafka uh, with ephemeral storage, with persistent storage, and uh, the Apache Kafka Connect. Uh, the last one is uh, the template in order to create a topic, as we can see uh, later. Let me uh, select the, ephemer uh, the ephemeral one just for the demo. And as you can see here, I have some uh, parameters that I can change on that template. So I can change the number of uh, cluster nodes uh, for the cluster that I'm going to deploy. Uh, I can change uh, the related image that I'm going to use in order to do that. Uh, the health check delay and timeout for Zookeeper and for Kafka and so on. And for now, there are just three parameters that we can configure on the broker, but the, the, the development is going really fast uh, upstream. So we already have um, the, 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 the the possibility to change all the parameters that we have uh, in a um, Kafka broker today. So if I click on create, what is going to happen is uh, that uh, the, the, um, the template has created a new uh, config map. You can see this uh, my cluster config map. And if I show you the information inside that config map, You can see that uh, in the data section of this config map, I have all the information for describing the cluster. So some Kafka broker parameters, the information related to the metrics uh, from Kafka and from Zookeeper, the number of nodes, information about the storage, and so on. So it means that uh, instead of using the templates, I can just write a config map with this structure, and uh, I can just create this config map, and the cluster controller will deploy the Kafka cluster for me. So if I switch to the OpenShift console, I can see that uh, uh, the related uh, resources that we need for deploying the cluster are being deployed by the cluster controller. So we have the stateful set for the Kafka uh, brokers. We have the stateful set for the Zookeeper nodes. And then we have another component that I'm going to show uh, in a few seconds that is the topic controller. 
So uh, as you can see, this is a simple demo because it's simple. In this way, just writing a config map and having the Kafka cluster up and running thanks to the, to the operator model using this cluster controller. But if we want to use the cluster and uh, creating topics, there is another component provided by StreamZ, which is the topic controller. Uh, this component is in charge to, to watch some other different config maps, which are config map uh, describing uh, uh, a topic. So having the information about the number of partitions, the number of replicas, or the configurations about the topic. And um, the, the, the topics um, will be created by the topic controller when uh, one of the config map is detected and created into the cluster. But we know that um, uh, we are not strictly uh, related to, to create the topics through the config map because the user can interact with the cluster and then uh, create a topic directly uh, on a broker, for example, using the, the, the tools that we have in the Apache Kafka project. Uh, and uh, the other way for creating topic uh, comes automatically from some application. For example, Kafka Connect and the Kafka Streams application uh, creates that topic automatically uh, has an internal usage. For example, Kafka Streams creates some internal topic uh, when you use some mapping uh, uh, in order to, to change the key for the messages uh, and so on. So the topic controller is in charge to, to deal with a sort of three-way diff because um, um, it needs to, to provide consistency between what we have in terms of resources inside the OpenShift cluster, so in terms of config map, and what we have in the Kafka cluster. It means that I can start to create a topic, uh, creating a config map, and then the topic controller will create the topic for me into the Kafka cluster, but it can happen that I create the topic directly into the Kafka uh, cluster on a broker, and the topic controller will detect that and will create the related config map in, uh, in OpenShift. So it means that uh, I have uh, always this kind of consistency be, uh, between what I have in the OpenShift cluster uh, described by some, some different config maps and what we have uh, in the Kafka cluster. For doing that, uh, <coughs> the topic controller uh, uses a sort of um, uh, private repo uh, in Zookeeper in order to resolve sometimes some conflicts that can happen if, for example, the topic controller uh, crash, in some case all the pods goes down and um, the user starts to create topic di uh, directly on the cluster. And when the topic controller uh, comes back, it can use this kind of uh, private repo in order to understand how to resolve the conflict if uh, it uh, has to create the config map or uh, there are some difference between the description that they have for the same topic uh, in the Kafka cluster or in the related config map. So, let me show how the topic controller works. Um, here I have a, a simple uh, I have a simple config map describing a uh, topic. So as you can see, I have a topic named created as config map, and uh, it's described by having uh, just one partition, just one replicas, and this is the configuration the, the specific configuration for the topic. So I have just to create this config map. And the topic controller will create the Kafka, the, 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 the Kafka topic for me. In order to check that, we can use uh, the Kafka topics uh, tool that we have with Kafka uh, running on one of the pods. Uh, so taking a look at the pods that are uh, created into the cluster, these are the pods that we have um, now. I can just uh, run one of um, this tool inside um, one of these uh, um, pods. So for example, I'll use the pod one, uh, the pod zero, in order to run the Kafka topics script connected to Zookeeper. for describing all the topic that we have into the cluster. So we can see that um, the topic described by the config map, the created as config map topic, was created by the topic controller. 
Uh, the other thing that I can do, for example, is uh, increasing the number of partition on that topic. So I can just uh, edit the config map that I have already deployed on the OpenShift cluster. So edit uh, the created as uh, config map, config map. And let me increase the number of partition to three, for example. The topic controller will detect this change and uh, will start the operation in order to increase the number of partition. And if I rerun the same command as before, we can see that the same topic now has three partition. The same thing um, um, can be done, for example, for the cluster. I can decide to increase the number of nodes into the cluster. So uh, I can show you, uh, I can edit uh, <coughs> the config map which is describing my cluster. And for example, I can just uh, update the number of Kafka nodes that I have here from three to five. And at the bottom of the console, we can see that now two new, two new nodes are created, right? So the cluster controller in this case detected the changes that I applied on the, on the related config map and then decided to start, in that case, two new different nodes. But as I already said, the, the, the topic controller is always uh, 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 in charge to have consistency even if I, uh, I'm going to create topics directly into uh, Kafka. So for example, let's create a new topic uh, uh, in Kafka running one of the tools, always on one of the pods that we have. So the Kafka topics tool, uh, we can use the same line as before, okay. Just let's do create uh, a topic named uh, uh, created uh, in uh, Kafka with um, no, uh, five, um, three partitions, replication um, factor one, and um, mm, for example, a configuration of uh, clean, clean up policy to compact in order to have this topic uh, with the compaction enabled. So we can see now that uh, if I run uh, the describe command, now we have uh, another topics into the cluster, the created in Kafka one, but we can see that at the same time, we have a new config map here, which was created by the topic controller. And I can show you the content of that config map, which as you can see, uh, no, this is the cluster, sorry. These are all the config map uh, created in uh, Kafka. Okay, so these are the information that uh, we used in order to create the, the topics in, uh, in Kafka. Uh, at the same time, as I said, uh, we can uh, uh, run some application alongside uh, our Kafka cluster in order to show that the, this application can live together and using the Kafka cluster as well. So I'm going just to deploy a simple application. Which is going to create a new topic. This is uh, my topic and two pods, one for uh, consuming and the other one for producing the messages. So we can see here that the topics the, the pods are uh, creating. And uh, just to be sure that the cluster is uh, working well, so the two clients are able to, to exchange messages, we can see, for example, into the consumer log that the consumer is receiving some messages sent on the my topic, and that uh, on the other side, we have uh, the producer sending the messages using the topic that was created as my topic, this one. So back to the, to the presentation. Uh, what is planned for the first release that we will have for NQ streams? 
uh, in uh, beta and then in GA. For the, for the version number one, we have this kind of, um, of features, so we can uh, uh, specify the configuration, the Kafka configuration in more details. Uh, we have the TLS encryption and authentication with client and brokers or between the brokers. Uh, the, uh, the authentication options that today are available uh, in, uh, in Kafka. Uh, the authorization using the ACL that we can create in, uh, in Zookeeper. And we can, for example, specify some limits and requests for the resources for running our uh, pods, uh, which host the, the broker, so the memory and the CPU uh, limits. The, the scaling for now is manual uh, in terms that uh, uh, we have to scaling just updating the config map, but uh, the, the partition reassignment uh, will be not uh, automatically executed by uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the cluster controller in this case. So it means that uh, if we want, for example, adding a new node, increasing the number of uh, brokers inside the cluster, then we have to move manually the partition that we want to use on the new node or uh, if we are going to remove a node, we are first moving the data from this node in order to avoid data loss. And we will have, of course, uh, the handling of the topics uh, as I already showed using the topic controller. Uh, these are some features that we have uh, after the version number uh, one. So detecting, for example, uh, a Kafka update, it means that I can update my config map saying uh, there is a new version of Kafka so from one to one to the version two, for example, and uh, uh, automatically the, the, the cluster controller will be in charge to update the Kafka version on all the brokers. Uh, the interesting one is uh, the balancing, uh, the uh, automated balancing uh, of the partitions on the, on the cluster, uh, some additional uh, authentication options, uh, and then, for example, exposing the Kafka cluster outside because with the current version, you can use uh, the Kafka cluster with applications running into the OpenShift cluster where the Kafka cluster itself is running. The service broker integration, so having uh, a really easy way in order to select the, the cluster to create uh, in uh, the OpenShift catalog using the service broker and then in that way deploying the, the cluster. Uh, more integration with um, some other different protocols, for example, NQP, NQTT, and HTTP, bridging uh, this kind of protocol to Kafka. Then a schema registry for saving uh, schemas for our messages. And uh, the support for the mirror maker in order to handle uh, mirroring uh, the data between uh, different uh, Kafka cluster which live in a different data center, for example. Uh, just before ending, let me show a, a sort of more complex demo where we have uh, a Kafka Streams application running. I have some uh, simulated device, send some temperature values on an IoT temperature topic. Then I have a Kafka Streams application, which is in charge to get all the temperature values from that topic and, uh, and processing them in order to get the maximum value in the, five, in the last five seconds and then putting this information to a new topic where a consumer application will show this data on a web console. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to create first the topic. So I have these resources which are going to create the topic that I need for, um, for sending the temperature value and for getting the values. Then I'm going to deploy the Kafka Streams application. At the same time, the consumer application. And we can see that on the OpenShift console, we are running the streaming application and uh, this consumer application, which has this web UI the consumer application, uh, application is reading from the IoT temperature max topic in order to get the value from there. Now I can just start, for example, a pod for simulating a device sending uh, temperature values. And uh, after the first pod is run, we should see some messages on the getting from the IoT temperature max and having this sort of graph showing the, temperature, the max temperature value in the 
last fix, uh, five seconds processed by, by the streams application. We can, for example, uh, increase the number of devices in order to increase the load. So all these devices are sending more uh, data to the topic processed by the streams application. And we are going to see more other um, graphs showing the temperature value for all the other devices that I added to the, to the cluster. So this is uh, a little bit more complex example for having uh, our Kafka um, cluster running alongside our application that in that case is a Kafka streams based application. So um, to wrap up the, the session, uh, Anki Streams uh, is a distribution of uh, Apache Kafka, which is part of the NQ uh, product. And as I uh, already said, it simplified the way to deploy uh, and manage the, the Kafka cluster on uh, OpenShift. It's completely open source because it's based on this upstream project, which is uh, StreamZ. And uh, the developer preview is already available. Uh, you can sign up for uh, accessing to the bits and then starting to use uh, this, um, this new product. And uh, regarding the roadmap that uh, we have, uh, the plan is having uh, a beta for uh, the summer and uh, GA for uh, the end of this uh, year. So thank you.